<clears throat> so let's go to the uh, the calendar app over here, and we're going to add another calendar. We call this. Uh, we'll make it an orange one. We'll call this one change uh, proposal. Uh, now we can say everybody has read access, but maybe we only want to have the uh, change uh, kind of. Um, uh, it's not uh, seeing the change group here, but we uh, should be able to uh, kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, pro provide. I think there might be a little bit of delay there, but you, you'll be able to kind of set which groups have access uh, to um, uh, write to this calendar, uh, like so, uh, and then we've got our, our calendar ready to go. Now, if we wanted to, uh, we can also uh, connect this um, uh, the, the calendar app to, for example, our Google or Office 365 calendars. If you wanted to make the uh, kind of change proposal or, or kind of um, planned changes calendar, calendars are kind of uh, public within the company, uh, it would be as simple as clicking on connect to Google, choosing the account, and then uh, clicking allow here. So that's gonna connect things up. Um, and then there's a connection here to be able to kind of uh, hook up the uh, this change proposals calendar to the change proposals calendar in the Google or Office 365 account like so. And now it's connected. Um, cool. So uh, now if I was to kind of create an event uh, inside the calendar app here, um, this is uh, brand new again, once again, but if I was to create an event inside of here, then this would create the, uh, the event over in the external calendar, uh, which we'll do in a sec. Uh, so let's come back to uh, that change uh, ticket here. Um, and now uh, we can kind of choose to be on a calendar. Before we do that, uh, we've got our calendar ready to go. Before we do that, we'll define our approval flow. So to define an approval flow, we kind of click over here into the approvals app and we can create a new approval definition. And we'll call this one a normal uh, change uh, approval. Um, then we can set who is going to approve this. Uh, now the recipients, uh, the per people who can approve, uh, you can uh, basically uh, set any user in uh, Zendesk. So I'm just gonna choose uh, Zendesk Agent 2 here. Uh, you can set anybody relative to the ticket. So maybe the SINE uh, collaborators, you can set any group inside of um, uh, Zendesk, so maybe you've got a change advisory board group uh, specifically set up in Zendesk that you want to send it to. Um, or, or uh, you know, you can even go advanced and start referencing uh, the contents of either a drop down field or a, maybe a, a user field, uh, a user manager field. Uh, and the way that we can do that uh, here is basically you get all user organization or uh, ticket fields listed that you can search for. So for example, I wanted to uh, have a, a manager field on the user, then I can just search for that and add that. Uh, we're not gonna go that advanced on this one. We're just gonna go a relatively uh, simple uh, kind of flow and we're just gonna have this uh, kind of uh, approved by uh, either um, Harriet or uh, let's say uh, Jeff uh, here. Um, and then we'll say, we only want uh, the required, we'll say, you know, you can say one, two, three, or percentage of these approvers need to say yes. Uh, and then we can set a timeout period of uh, how long it takes. Now, if these guys don't get back uh, or say uh, approve or decline within one hour, then this approval will time out. Now, if, if it, uh, however, if we were to set up an escalation step, we could say, well, now in one hour, if they don't uh, kind of respond, it's going to be kind of uh, sent to somebody else. Uh, so you can set up as many escalation steps as you like, like so. Uh, you can even set up um, uh, kind of uh, 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 kind of full steps as well. So within, uh, you could say, send it to the CAB here, change advisory board, uh, send it to the, uh, the IT board, uh, uh, you know, send it to uh, legal, uh, whatever you want, however many uh, steps you wanted to, uh, you could do that. And then, uh, so by st setting steps, uh, you, you know, once this approval is done, it moves on. It's a sequential step down to each uh, kind of uh, team that you set. Um, so within each step, you can have escalation steps, but um, yeah, it, so it's, it's, it's quite flexible in the way that you can set it up. For now, uh, we're just gonna have a singular step 
Um, and uh, for our message here, we're going to ask for certain fields to be approved. Uh, and those fields we're going to access uh, simply by clicking on the plus on the right hand side here and, and looking for those fields that we created. So we're going to look for uh, maybe a ticket type. Uh, and so what this does is it actually uh, when you when you when you find the field it actually injects a placeholder this placeholder is uh, referring to the field in question um, so you know this is basically a shortcut so you don't have to really have to you know uh, use uh, kind of look up Zendesk placeholders on their website or, or, or how to reference these you just going kind to of type in what you want uh, so we're going to say uh, change type uh, what do we do there Let's just start that again. So we go uh, ticket type and change type. And we'll do that and then that. And then we'll say uh, we want uh, the configuration item. And what was the last fields that we had there? We had. Um, and and then the impact so we'll come back to approve and look for the impact field now what we also want to have as part of the approval is probably the um, uh, the, the calendar information so uh, now one thing that the calendar app does is when you kind of uh, set uh, a calendar event to take place it stores information in invisible ticket fields, fields that you won't see on the left hand side, the app is actively hiding it, but you can use the information within these fields throughout the rest of Zendesk, whether that's we're, you know creating a macro to inject the date and time of the calendar event, or building your report, or in this case, uh, sending it as part of an approval. And the way that we do that is to um, uh, simply uh, reference the, the, the field. So we're gonna say uh, the calendar event time, calendar, um, event uh, date um, and then we can maybe do the time zone as well um, and uh, we can you know maybe even do the, the calendar calendar name so calendar name so this information will now also be included as part of the approval. We can make it that these fields are mandatory before the approval can be sent off. And um, uh, there's a lot of things that we can do as far as ticket updates uh, go, uh, but we go, won't go that deep, deep deep into the app. We can also kind of change the, the, you know, the, 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 the buttons here, and, and there's a lot of different things you can do in the approvals app. But this is all we'll need to do to get this approval uh, to be uh, kind of uh, spun off. Now, if we wanted to set this approval to be automatically applied to the ticket, what we could do is we could click on here to create a trigger. And this trigger, when we click on create trigger, it will pop up a thing and give us a shortcut to a um, predefined trigger. It's essentially what it's doing behind the scenes is calling a webhook. Um, and that uh, webhook is sending an inf information to the Sweethawk service to say, hey, this ticket requires an approval on it. Um, so we're gonna say when a ticket uh, is created and uh, the ticket uh, type, uh, sorry, ticket type is, um, uh, change and maybe the change type uh, is uh, normal then we're going to apply this um, uh, approval now we can have it so that the approval uh, is automatically sent off with all the information currently available or we can have it so that the uh, kind of um, uh, approval is uh, uh, applied and required but uh, is still open for new data so and that's basically controlled here if we can say send is true or false we're going to set it to, to false um, and uh, we're going to remove this last rule here and click on save so um, by doing that we can see that if we uh, were to actually go to our um, uh, we've got our change ticket here um, uh, but if we were to go to our problem ticket and spin up a secondary change, maybe something else needs to be done. Change, uh, um, do that other thing <laughs> for the servers. 
uh, whatever that is. Uh, we create the task, uh, we convert it to a new ticket. We use our template here to spin off uh, that sub ticket. And now that we've got our trigger that fires to automatically add the approval, we can, we'll be able to see that that approval uh, is uh, uh, kind of, uh, actually we, we didn't uh, set the, uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, the change type to normal here. Uh, so sorry, my bad. So we're going to go back here uh, to, the, to the task template here. Uh, the task, sorry, the task template. We could we could also change the trigger to kind of remove that rule that looks for a normal change type, but it's probably a good thing to um, have uh, extra um, uh, specification. So when the change type is normal. So now let's try this again. We'll get rid of this ticket. Um, And we're on the uh, problem ticket. We'll spin. We'll, we'll actually. I'm going to delete this now. You can control it so that agents can't delete these things, by the way. But um, uh, let's uh, kind of spin up a change ticket here. So I'm going to uh, create change. Um, do that other thing, and we're going to spin that up. Convert to new ticket. Normal change request. And in this time, uh, now that the ticket is being created with uh, the change type normal, we can see that the approvals app has kicked into gear and is saying, hey, by the way, this, is, this, this ticket has uh, uh, got an approval uh, uh, on it um, and it's gonna be sent off to these two agents. Uh, one of them is required. Uh, this is the information we need. Uh, and as you can see here, as I start to fill out this information, um, uh, kind of uh, servers like so, uh, then, um, it's it's updating it on the ticket. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, the the last part it's asking for here is around the calendar event details, as as we uh, kind of I was talking about before. So this is where um, the calendar app can come into play. So if I was to choose to create an event on the change proposals calendar, or uh, like uh, so, and click on create in calendar. When I create something for say Thursday, for example, then those fields automatically uh, get kind of um, uh, populated uh, like so, and I can submit this ticket. So the information that we've just filled out on the ticket doesn't exist yet until we submit the ticket. Once this has happened, this will uh, allow us to send the approval off to our team here. So uh, by clicking on send here, uh, we can now see that this approval has started uh, we've got uh, approval uh, kind of uh, kind of comment in this uh, thread here saying this is the information that is going to be uh, kind of uh, needed to be uh, approved. Um, and from the uh, apps pane on the right hand side here, we can also see uh, these agents here are required uh, or that, you know, these, these approvers, <coughs> sorry, um, uh, can uh, uh, need to need to say yes. So from an approvers perspective, approvers do not need to be agents in Zendesk. They can be anybody. So from the approvers perspective, they're just going to be seeing, um, you know, uh, information that's come into their uh, inbox like so. Uh, as you can see, we've got a, a few approvals come through because we've had a couple of test tickets. Um, now this uh, approvals uh, kind of uh, email, uh, you can uh, add in your. Um, uh, brand uh, kind of logo in here just in the approve apps settings if you like uh, but then you know based on our settings we're just going to click on approve or decline we're going to say uh, yes no worries and then click on approve so back inside the ticket we'll be able to see that this approval is now granted by one approver this person um, the uh, comment from the approver has been uh, kind of listed here and uh, the fact that it was granted has listed here as well. Um, so yeah, now that we've got this approved, we move on to uh, the next phase. And the next phase could be that the, the change is implemented by simply assigning this uh, ticket over to an implementations team. Um, you could also have it so that you spin up an, a secondary uh, sub ticket for you know work order uh, for uh, kind of XYZ job. Um, uh, it's up to you how you uh, kind of uh, go about having this work completed, uh, like I said, either in this ticket or another ticket. Um, but uh, 
once the, um, the, the, the actual job is completed, then this is where you would uh, solve out this sub ticket. And if we go over to our problems uh, view by solving out uh, the parent, uh, sorry, the uh, the change sub ticket, this will automatically reopen the uh, the problem ticket, as you can see here. And so, from the problem manager's perspective, they'll be able to see, oh, why is this open? Oh, a change uh, got completed. Uh, no problems. I can inform uh, my incidents, or if I want to, I can also uh, wait until you know all the changes that need to take place are completed. Uh, either way, um, uh, I, 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 you know, I've, this, I've been alerted to this. I can, if I want to, I can mark it back as an on, on hold until this other one has been completed, or I can kind of, uh, uh, yeah, um, take take action uh, as I see fit. So, um, so yeah, so that is essentially um, kind of uh, how uh, this, uh, you know, to set up a, a, a change flow. Um, uh, so we started off by installing the super suite and the desired apps. We created a uh, bunch of fields uh, and, uh, and uh, some groups to make the change possible. Uh, those were all native in Zendesk. Um, we set up our field conditions app to show and hide fields. We also uh, kind of replaced the native type field with a custom type field. Uh, we set up our template with the tasks app, allowing us to spin off <clears throat> um, our sub tickets easily. We uh, created a calendar to be able to plan out when our changes were and connected it to our Google calendar. And finally, we set up an approval uh, definition uh, for being able to uh, define uh, who and, uh, is, is sent an approval uh, 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 and what they're going to approve and whether that's going to be mandatory or not. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully uh, you got a decent amount out of this video. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to email us at support at sweethawk.com. Uh, thank you for watching.